This amendment will give the MPs in the other place and this House the power to stand up to do the right thing for the country. It is Parliament, thanks to this amendment, will have the ability to stop the train crash that is Brexit. In 2016, Mr Clegg said, Mr Clegg said clearly, we must comply with the instructions to exit the EU. Now note the wording, not advice, not recommendation, but instruction of the people to exit the EU. There are those in this House, decent people, principled people, who hate the idea of leaving the EU. And I understand those feelings. But there are also those in this House who have vowed to do everything they possibly can to destroy Brexit. And that, my Lords, is not a matter of principle, but a matter of abuse of privilege. A direct attempt not to secure the best for Britain, but to have Brexit driven onto the rocks. This, my Lords, is a Wreckers Amendment, and I wish it ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Section 3 of the new clause provides that a withdrawal agreement may be implemented only if it has been approved by an Act of Parliament, and Subsection 7 provides that that Act must have received royal assent by the end of next January. So that section expressly contemplates a situation in which the government has reached an agreement with the European Union, that the House of Commons has approved that agreement, but that your Lordship's House, simply by delaying a passage of the bill beyond next January, could defy not only the will of the people, but also the will of the elected Chamber of Parliament. My Lords, if that would not provide a constitutional crisis, I don't know what would. My Lords, this new clause is thoroughly and fundamentally misconceived. I'm afraid it illustrates the lengths, the appalling lengths, to which the die-hard Remainers are prepared to go to achieve their own. And I urge your Lordships to reject it. My Lords. I'm not a natural ditherer. I'm actually very, uh, perhaps overly decisive, but I did hesitate about some of the amendments that are coming up today. But I decided, in the interests of democracy, democracy did not stop on t the 23rd of June last year. In the interest of demo democracy, I would vote for these amendments. But quite honestly, the speeches in favour of them have turned me against the amendment. It, there is clearly more of an agenda than just allowing more of the people's will, more of the people's say, and allowing more uh, parliamentary uh, control of the process. So I personally will not vote for this amendment now. My Lords, if we reflect on the relationship between your Lordship's House and the House of Commons um, and, and our respective responsibilities, surely it's our responsibility to advise the House of Commons, to advise the government, in the words that the noble Viscount, Viscount Hailsham used, to suggest, to argue, to explain. But it is no part of this government, of, of this House's responsibility to seek to manipulate the House of Commons and to manipulate the government, to seek to choreograph future proceedings in the House of Commons, and certainly no part of our responsibilities effectively to pull the rug from under the government. My Lords, if we pass this amendment and if we pass some of the others that are on the order paper today, I fear that we shall be getting too big for our constitutional boots and many of our fellow countrymen feel the same. <laughs>